finally posting another recipe video. It has been way too long. So I'm going to start this video by showing you guys how I make my vegan buffalo chicken stuffed peppers and then towards the end of the video I'm going to focus more on the star of the recipe or I guess one of the stars of the recipe, sweet bell peppers. So I have a degree in nutrition and just an overall passion for food and cooking. So in my recipe videos I like to talk about one of the main ingredients from the recipe and you know just go over the nutritional info, give some additional facts or any other random little tips and basically just nerd out about food for a couple of minutes. So if any of that sounds interesting to you and if you're curious how I make these vegan buffalo chicken stuffed peppers then stick around. So this recipe is enough to make two large stuffed peppers and these are the ingredients that you're going to need. What's nice about this recipe is that it can very easily be adjusted to suit your needs. So you can pretty much use any kind of sweet pepper you want, whichever plant-based chicken or cheese substitutes you prefer, and then also whatever brand of hot sauce or ranch dressing. For my recipe, I like to use a half a block of tempeh, two green peppers, mostly just because they're always the cheapest ones, one and a half cups of cooked brown rice, a half a cup of yellow or white chopped onion, one stalk of celery, you can do two. I wasn't really sure how much I wanted to use when I filmed this, so I only ended up using one of them. Two slices of BioLife smoked provolone, two tablespoons of Daya ranch dressing, two tablespoons of Frank's red hot sauce. To season the tempeh while cooking, I use equal parts of garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, thyme, and salt. Probably used about an eighth of a teaspoon each. After gathering all of your ingredients, the first thing you're going to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So I like to begin by chopping up my tempeh and my veggies. I already had the onion chopped, so you're not going to see me cutting that but you do need a half a cup of chopped onion, which is about the equivalent of a half of a small or medium onion. I also cut the tempeh into bite-sized pieces, as well as the celery. So there are a couple different ways to cut the peppers, and honestly, I don't recommend doing it the way I did. Um, I always do it and then regret it later because they just don't stand up well when you're cooking them. So you can cut them this way by cutting the top off, or you can cut them in half from top to bottom and lay the halves down on their sides in the oven. If you do cut them the way that I do in the video, you could also cut a very thin slice off of the bottom of the peppers, that way they have a flat base to sit on. But again, I forgot to do this as well, so seriously for this part, just do as I say and not as I do. <laughs> Next, I cook the onion and tempeh by heating up one to two tablespoons of olive oil in a pan over medium heat. First, I add the tempeh to the pan, mix it around to coat them in oil, and then I add my seasonings. I let this cook for three to four minutes, then add in the onion and continue to cook for an additional three to four minutes until both the tempeh and the onion are slightly browned. So while that is cooking or after that finishes cooking, you can begin the rice mixture. I start off by adding both the rice and celery into a medium bowl. Next, I add two tablespoons of hot sauce, two tablespoons of ranch, and then mix everything to combine. Next, add in the tempeh and onion and mix everything together once again to make sure it's fully combined. It might be a good idea to do a little taste test at this point and just see if there's anything that needs to be adjusted, such as more ranch or more hot sauce. As you can see, I didn't think mine was spicy enough, so I went ahead and added a little more hot sauce, probably around one to two tablespoons more. Then comes the fun part, which is filling the peppers. I don't think I end up showing the full process in this video, but this recipe was exactly enough to make two large stuffed peppers. So if you do have maybe three smaller peppers, this could be enough to make more than two. I just recommend pressing the mixture down every few scoops to make sure everything is really packed in there. And since I was not intelligent in the way that I cut my peppers earlier, I ended up putting them in a bread pan just so they had walls to hold on to so they wouldn't fall over while cooking. But if you cut them in a different or a better way, then putting them on a baking sheet is perfectly fine too. So once the peppers are stuffed, I place them in the oven to cook for 20 minutes. And after the 20 minutes is up, I take the peppers back out of the oven, take my two slices of smoked provolone and stick them on top of the peppers and then put them back in the oven to cook for an additional five minutes. 
Now, if you want the more bubbly brown effect, then I suggest you turn off your oven and put on the broiler on high and just make sure you're watching the peppers the entire time so nothing burns or melts over the sides of the pan. If you don't wanna do that, then you can just keep the peppers at 350 and cook until the cheese is melted, which is gonna be you know a couple of minutes depending on what brand of cheese you're using. And there you have it, my vegan buffalo chicken stuffed peppers recipe. So feel free to add any additional toppings like scallions or hot sauce, more ranch, perhaps some celery on the side. Definitely let them cool down for a couple of minutes because they're going to be extremely hot and you do not want to burn yourself um, like I do most of the time, but otherwise they are ready to enjoy. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you end up trying the recipe, let me know down in the comments how it went. Also feel free to comment other substitutions that you have in mind or that you used. I'd love to see what different variations people come up with of this recipe because there's so many different ones you can do with all of the plant-based cheeses, chicken sauces that are on the market these days. And like I said earlier, I definitely recommend cutting the peppers in half from top to the bottom and then laying them on their sides, kind of like um, the pepper was laid in the last shot. I only did that so I could show you guys what the inside Side of the pepper looked like but if you end up doing that then of course you're going to have one half of each pepper so you could have four halves of peppers in total and then you can also lay the cheese on top of the half and then the cheese is covering a greater surface area of the rice mixture and we stand more cheese in this household so it's up to you both ways work one way might just be a little bit messier and more of a hassle than the other but the recipe will turn out the same either way. So if you're still watching, now you may be wondering, okay, I watched the recipe part of the video, so now what is so cool about bell peppers that you're making me watch a couple extra minutes for? <laughs> not that I'm making you, that's up to you. I'm not forcing you to be here, you can leave whenever you want, but you know, please stay. So bell peppers, why should we be eating them? Why should we include them in our diet? What makes them so wonderful? Well, for starters, they're a fruit, so you already know that you're going to be getting a bunch of nutritional benefits. Fish what? Oh yeah, sorry, peppers are technically fruit fruits, not vegetables, because they come from the flower of the plant, so sorry if I just ruined your childhood or something. <laughs> Tomatoes aren't the only produce that people have been lying to you about all these years. <laughs> but regardless of what you want to call them, peppers can add many flavors and nutritional benefits to your diet. In terms of macros, there isn't too much going on just because they're mostly made of water. If you are curious, the large green peppers that I used each contain about 32 calories, 7 grams of carbohydrates, and 2 grams of fiber, which is fantastic, 0 grams of fat, of course, and then about 1 gram of protein. So of course, peppers like most fruits and vegetables are really great for people who need or require or just want a low-fat diet, which of course we know is associated with a lowered risk of cardiovascular disease as well as a handful of other diseases. And although the macronutrient values of peppers is quite small, they are rather abundant in micronutrients, specifically in vitamin C, vitamin A, and also potassium. So one large green bell pepper has about 132 milligrams of vitamin C, which is like way beyond the daily value um, recommended for most adults. And vitamin C C can act as an antioxidant, making it really good for your immune system. And kind of like I said before, it does have great preventative benefits to your health. So, you know, it can reduce the risk of things like cardiovascular disease and is also great for preventing or helping with a common cold. In terms of vitamin A, for green bell peppers, there isn't too much. It's only probably going to be about maybe like three to four percent of your daily value. But vitamin A does have really great benefits like helping with your vision, also your immune system. And red bell peppers have even more vitamin A, which I will get into in a moment. And for potassium, again, not quite a size of vitamin C, but you are still getting a decent amount. I think about like 8% depending on your body type and composition. Potassium is something that most adults in the United States aren't getting enough of. You know, we're getting way too much sodium and not enough potassium because the two are related. And having potassium in your diet is really crucial for preventing hypertension. So by increasing the amount of potassium that you include in your diet, you're also then decreasing your blood pressure, which is mostly due to the increase in sodium that is leaving your body as a result. And like I said before, this is great for preventing hypertension and potassium is also good for bone health and possibly in preventing kidney stones. So besides the nutrition facts that I just gave to you, there are a couple of other, I guess, fun little facts about peppers that I wanted to share. I feel like one of the biggest questions is always what causes the peppers to be different colors 
Is it just different peppers or is it the stage of ripeness? As far as I can tell from my research, the answer is both. So a lot of the times, you know, green peppers are usually the unripe peppers where red is the other end of the spectrum and is when they are ripe and most mature. And you can get red peppers from green peppers. In fact, last summer I actually grew green peppers and they all ended up turning red because I didn't harvest them in time. But you can also, you know, grow other colors of peppers from a different variety of plants, if that makes sense. And as I kind of alluded to before, there are different nutritional benefits. They're not going to vary too, too much on most things, but vitamin A is going to be the biggest one. So because of the beta carotene content in red peppers, you're going to be getting way more vitamin A from the red scale spectrum of peppers than you are from the green spectrum of peppers. And they're also gonna have a little more vitamin C as well. But other than the micronutrients, just a couple of other differences is that because green peppers are harvested sooner and require less energy to you know, get them matured to red peppers, they cost less. <laughs> so that's why I always go for green peppers because they're less expensive and they do have different tastes. I don't know if you've ever had both kinds at the same time, but green peppers are gonna be a little more earthy, whereas red peppers are definitely gonna have a little more of a sweeter taste. In terms of the other recipes that you can use peppers in, there are so many, especially for stuffed pepper recipes. There's so many different types of stuffed pepper recipes out there. And there's also a handful of different cuisines that utilize stuffed peppers or, you know, as a fusion of different cuisines. You know, you can have more of the Mexican style, you can have more of a Mediterranean style. Fajitas and tacos is also obviously another option. Um, I personally also like to use peppers as like scoops for dips such as guac or hummus. You know, instead of using carrot sticks, I'll use just pieces of bell pepper. Of course, peppers are also great for stir fries of which there is a million recipes. And then I personally also enjoy peppers and onions on pizza when I decide to have toppings. I normally don't, but if I do, it's either extra cheese or peppers and onions. <laughs> Great combo. Last couple facts I have for you are that peppers are in season usually in the fall and summer because they are a warm weather crop. Although in most grocery stores, at least where I'm from, peppers are in the store all the time, no matter what season it is. But you know, if you are looking to grow your own at some point, which they're pretty easy to grow, just know that you're gonna need to plant those more in the springtime, summer, and more warmer months. In terms of storing the peppers, most of the resources I saw suggested either putting them in the crisper, or if you don't have a vegetable crisper, you can just put them in a plastic bag and they'll be good in the fridge for up to five days. Personally, you should probably do as I say, not as I do. But a lot of the time I'll get peppers, I'll just throw them in a random part of my fridge when I'm ready for them, I'll take them out and wash them. That might be a day after I buy them. That might be like two weeks after I buy them. <laughs> so as long as they're not moldy and they're not squishy or have any like brown moldy parts, then you're normally good to go. All right guys, well that is all I have for you. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. Again, if you make this recipe, please let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear about it. Otherwise, I had a really great time filming this video. It felt good to film a recipe video again because that's kind of why I originally created my YouTube channel was to share recipes and I haven't really shared that much. But I do have another one set up for probably not until a couple of weeks from now. But the recipes are coming, I promise. So yeah, thank you guys for sticking around.